we are. I'm gonna take. There we go. Awesome. Welcome. I see oh, a few familiar faces good. here. I love it. We will wait just a few moments. Um, Colleen Fitzpatrick is going to be helping me along today and um, manning the chat uh, and such. So looks like she just started recording. So Colleen, uh, do you, are you wanting maybe just to give a couple more minutes or you think we're ready to get started? What do you think? That is completely up to you. I think you can get started and I'll keep admitting people as they come in. And we have the recordings and I think Jeanette is going to share that later on. So Perfect. if they miss anything, they can just reference the oh. video. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, so I, I am sure this is, Uh, but I'm really excited to share this uh, with you guys. I feel like, uh, you know, certainly uh, this time, right, we have access, number one, to so many resources that we didn't have, uh, you know, back, say, 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Um, and it's much more accessible and I think uh, shouldn't be so um, intimidating for everybody to uh, explore. I think escape rooms have so much uh, potential to be applied over a wide variety of um, different disciplines and venues and, um, you know, just general objectives and, and purposes. Um, so I, like I said, I'm, I'm really in, enthusiastic about this. And I think, uh, you know, certainly it, it allows you to get, again, very creative. Um, so. Go ahead and get get started. All right. Um, so this session uh, today, I have a couple of very specific objectives that I thought uh, would be relevant um, to everybody. Um, I'm going to give you know kind of a few examples of different ways um, you know kind of presentation that you can use for escape rooms. Um, you know, based on what your purpose is. Um, I certainly am going to discuss a couple of best practices um, that for escape rooms um, and some common pitfalls. And I'm going to tell you that I, I will be very much uh, candid and upfront uh, about a few of those things that uh, you may come across yourself or things to, you know, that um, generally, uh, you know, you, you would like to avoid to make your escape room experience as, as good and positive. Um, as possible. Um, I definitely going to leave you with some resources uh, and I think you're going to be very pleasantly surprised um, about just the depth of resources are out there and all the tools that you can use to build um, an escape room. And then I would like um, us to take a little bit of time to talk out loud about, you know, okay, my discipline is nursing. But that doesn't mean that um, there aren't so many other different themes, other ways that we could um, apply it. And I would like, you know, a little bit of time to talk about what, uh, you know, what ideas that you might have, what things you're excited about, about using um, escape rooms uh, and have a little time to um, kind of talk through a few ideas uh, there if possible. All right. Um, you know, so really, I think kind of when we're starting to prepare our escape room, it, it's, uh, you know, defining your objectives, I think is where, where I like to start um, and think about what is it that I'm wanting, you know, to, uh, to accomplish by this. Because, um, uh, you know, certainly my, my whole enthusiasm about this is that it's just such a creative way to engage students. Uh, but starting out with what is it that I, I want them to take away um, from this experience. Um, definitely evaluate your skill level. 
Um, I think that uh, although these tools are very intuitive these days, um, gone are the days whenever um, you would have to basically write code for every component of this lovely little web page, basically, that you're looking at right now. Um, gone are those days and things shouldn't be, it shouldn't be so intimidating uh, for you. But I advise that, um, you know, really evaluate what your capacity is, what your skill level is, so that that way you can use these tools to the best of your ability. Because I think sometimes it's, it's easy to get overwhelmed and uh, get excited about what you can do, but then it may not perform uh, well or achieve your objectives uh, for there. Uh, platform is a big consideration uh, with these uh, type of uh, activities or events. Uh, there are some times where you may be only introducing a concept and you may say, I think that having it on one slide or in a single room might do fine for that. Uh, but there's, uh, you know, then other times where I want them to go on that journey and it's a series of uh, information and clues uh, about a broader topic. Um, and certainly that's where it gets fun and interesting um, for sure. Uh, and then we have the, uh, then we have the ability actually to combine um, the, the two. Uh, and so what I'm starting out with here is on, basically on um, Google Sites. So it's kind of in the form of an evolving web page. And you go, you link from page to page to page um, as your journey um, evolves. And so, uh, you know, you can use a combination of that um, or Google Slides. Uh, that is a little bit better tuned to if you want something that's very graphically interesting, I would say. Um, so, you know, kind of take a, take time and consider what am I, you know, what it, what is the use here and what's going to suit my purpose um, best there. Um, I found myself using a combination uh, a little bit. And so I will uh, certainly will take a journey uh, there and show you a little bit about um, one of the um, sites that I created and kind of get your imagination started, I would say. Um, so certainly, really your theme is a big part of the adventure. And certainly you can uh, build you know, on common interests, you know, something that's um, kind of in the popular culture um, that combines uh, with the particular topic or subject matter that you're um, going into. Uh, but I'll encourage you that you shouldn't be limited, uh, you know, to what you do with it. And you can see here, this is just a, a list of a few examples um, that I found uh, in, you know, uh, just on, on the web and searching of, of different topics that people came up with. And so I always find that it's uh, really uh, interesting to see kind of the breadth of how this can be applied. It's really fantastic. Um, so mine, I'm Pediatric nursing, that is that is my discipline, that's my profession. Um, and so I had um, certainly become intrigued uh, with this. I, at a conference, had seen one uh, that was done for assessment skills. And I thought, what better perfect way <laughs> to use an escape room um, as, as safety for my pediatric clients? So that was definitely um, my um, my first love, and I thought this is this is going to be a very intriguing and engaging way to get my students um, to kind of pull this together. Um, I've seen one on literary topics like Treasure Island. I saw one on Shakespeare's The Misadventure of Missing Manuscript, which kind of pulled in uh, that they were reading several different works um, that they had to um, kind of navigate. There was one classical chaos that was geography. There was um, a couple of math ones called Math Possible and uh, Statistical Sleuth. So um, I just encourage you that there are so many different, uh, such a variety of ways uh, that we could use this, so many applications. Um, but I'll show you really quickly, uh, kind of a little, just a little blurb uh, about mine, you know, that I had first made up uh, about pediatric safety. 
Um, and then we'll go forward to um, kind of setting the stage and, and some best practices about, about it. But mine, okay, just two seconds. I'm going to allow, there we go. So that we can go in here. Um, so this is, you know, I, I thought, yeah, safety is, is a great way. So I started by, um, again, building a story around it. And uh, so my little theme here says that, uh, you know, that you were going to teach a group of children at a daycare about health habits and what you found was alarming. And that it says, this is no safe place. There are hazards everywhere. And your mission is to free the children from the hazards and bring them to safety. You have 60 minutes. Um, so, uh, you know, certainly uh, you can see you can integrate graphics really well. I had a little, I narrated it um, to do a little intro blurb um, about it. And then we began to, um, get started with our our adventure and so in you know when we come into the first room you know uh, safe sleep was one of my topics um, and i'll take a moment to kind of point out that um, this is a little bit how you might uh, integrate some of those things so google slides is very uh, you know very visually appealing and this might be an example if you thought uh, you just wanted to do a single room and put several objects in there, several clues. Uh, Google Slides might be a great way, uh, great way to do that um, for you. And so this is how my uh, how my adventure started, really. <laughs> okay, let me let me head back there. Uh, so, uh, like I said, that was my theme. And um, certainly, as we get a little further into this, I probably would like to hear a little little differences. Uh, maybe ideas that you guys have about how you how you think you could apply what themes you might be excited about um, for escape rooms. Um, so I definitely am going to leave you with some best practices. Um, I would say that uh, you know part of my um, kind of objective for this is thinking about how we can engage our students. Um, and get this, you know, as far as utilize this platform um, to really get them to, uh, you know, problem solving, critical thinking, get them excited about what they're learning. Um, and so I, these are, this is what I found I, that would work well um, for that. Um, so my first piece of advice is that uh, really any particular clue that you are um, designing um, and a lot of times you'll just hear them commonly called locks, um, that really they should have to have two or three different pieces of information that they have to then either gather or pull together. Um, and so in my particular um, scenario, one of my things, uh, they had ingested some manner of uh, poison um, I won't say it all out loud, uh, but uh, what they, uh, you know, what the scenario comes in is that you're exploring the daycare, right, identifying um, hazards, uh, and this particular um, toddler you come across, and he's having these signs and symptoms, right, and then you explore the room, and you're finding all of these items, uh, and so notice about this, the, the whole philosophy behind it, though, is that they really have to, um, first of all, be familiar with each of these items that are displayed and what that might look like, right, if they were had ingested it or had problems. And then they have to relate it back to what it is, what the signs and symptoms of your kiddo is. So several of you, you know, a few of you are related to nur in the nursing profession, several of you are not. Um, but the principle is the same, right? That we don't want it to be something, uh, you know, extremely direct or more rote. Um, this is a way that we get them to bring all of those pieces together um, for it. So um, one of the other little um, kind of best practices that's um, on my list is to give feedback as they go along. Give them good, solid, uh, you know, at, at a girl, at a boy, um, that yes, you got the right answer or no, um, you know, let's have, you know, look at it again. 
um, there. So, uh, you know, you can uh, be very creative uh, with this and explore it a couple of different ways. So let's say um, I thought, oh, you know, this is a vitamin that happens to have iron and a few other nutrients. Maybe I think it's that one. And so I clicked on that one. Oh, you know, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, no. Try again. Um, and then we would have to be directed back to the other answers. And then I would ask myself, well, okay, that's not the right answer. Um, let's think again about these other items. And then finally, they pick the right answer. Um, and it gives them feedback and said, excellent, good job, you got the right answer. And then we can go back um, to our page. And then we can move forward um, from that moment um, there. Um, so that covers a couple, you know, about feedback and about really having more than one component. Let's not make it quite so simple. Um, another, like, another thing that uh, we certainly want to avoid is, uh, you know, in some of these answers, they, if a student can find a hack, they will. Um, if they find a way to circumvent, uh, you know, kind of this, this pattern that we've set up for them, right? Uh, they'll, they'll find a way. Uh, about it. And I always think competition is, is a fabulous thing, right? It gets them excited. Um, and certainly uh, they, you know, they, they want to try their best and get through it and get it accomplished successfully. So that's the upside. Uh, but the downside is sometimes that that may lead them to want to try to do it a little bit more expeditiously uh, than they really should, and to uh, maybe not take the full time um, that it would take um, to go through um, these uh, puzzles. So, um, you know, it, there's a couple of different uh, ways that we can um, certainly assess it. And I'm, you know, as far as whether they absorb the material or not, um, you know, one of the, the one I showed you before uh, was a very visual, right? That we could insert a link uh, and, and it was a more, Okay, I get a little happy with my bitmojis, a little bit. Uh, but uh, so this one is a different way that you can use Google Forms. And, uh, you know, then we can choose here. Uh, but again, it's the same thing to where if I'm selecting this, uh, this object, you have to be very, um, you know, very careful um, that whenever I submit this and say that, that it, it just says, please um, try again. And then you can, and then you can sit, you submit another um, object uh, because uh, what can, what can happen whenever you're um, setting up these locks, there are a couple of um, ob like options that you have to choose to make sure that they're not getting the correct answer immediately. Um, so I would steer you away from that because they will certainly, uh, they will certainly take advantage um, of that. Uh, variety of clues. Uh, and I'll, I will certainly um, kind of give you a little bit of resources at the end, because there's so much out there, uh, you know, that, that we can do to um, kind of shake it up and make them approach the material in a lot of um, different ways, um, I would say. Um, so I'm going to go back to my room here initially and just kind of point out a couple of like uh, you know one of the ways like the about variety there are different ways that you can do um, and the beautiful thing about th using uh, a platform such as say google slides is that now um, i have a nice little gif i can ex i can in like put multiple different items and clues in the room uh, but in this case uh, we're talking about safe sleep um, and so let's, let's just go to present. Uh, we're talking about safe sleep, right? Um, so I'm going to click on this um, kiddo. And then it, that it took me, I decided to do a crossword puzzle um, for this particular one. And so then, um, you know, I will fill it in. And so if I say, oh, this is two across, and the answer was pacifier. Uh, what happened to be that one. 
Um, so what you, like I would caution you against, and I'll, I'll lead into pitfalls, is that um, if I um, go back to my room and then I go to my lock and my question is too simple um, and it says, oh, what was the answer to three down? Immediately, probably that, that student is gonna click on the lock, say, oh, three down, go back to the puzzle and then say, Mm, all I have to do is solve that one. Um, and so uh, certainly, uh, you know, making, again, making it a little more complex, um, not making it too simple, um, and a variety of different uh, types of clues is, is definitely a good way to go. Um, on the positive reinforcement, uh, everybody's kind of, uh, you know, wants their little kudos uh, along the way. And it depends on the length of your room, my particular one, they literally could spend a good 45 minutes or, or an hour going through all the material because it's all different kinds of hazards. Um, but you can take little moments, little moments to celebrate and say, oh, look, I, I had them view a water safety um, and take a moment and celebrate that. And they answered the question correctly after they watched a video. And then it says, it gave them a little badge and said, oh, look, you're a certified water watcher uh, because they answered the water safety question correctly. Um, and so then, of course, we would go back, we would go forward to the next stage um, of our presentation, our escape room, um, rather. Uh, so uh, I, I think those are little ways to kind of keep them interested, keep them engaged and make them use your information, I think, on a little bit deeper um, level for it. Um, I think we all always, I will advise, just consider the level, level that's appropriate for your particular group. Again, um, I don't know about your students but a lot of mine tend to get quite, quite competitive um, during this. Um, and again, uh, we want, you know, it, it certainly is good to motivate them, uh, but we certainly want to keep it, we want to keep it congenial, uh, I, I would say. And then also to give them adequate time uh, to be able to complete all of the tasks um, that they need to complete to get through um, the escape room. Awesome. All right, so I kind of led into it, but I will say uh, there, there definitely are some common things and I will be very forthright um, that I was guilty of the majority of, of these <laughs> on the pitfalls. Um, and especially if you're just not accustomed to um, utilizing this, uh, this platform in this way, um, I think let's get comfortable with the technology, like I said. And, uh, you know, certainly people sometimes are, are again, enthusiastic. They want to be uh, able to use this technology, um, again, to, uh, you know, to have fun with the material, to engage their students. Uh, but we also want to make sure that it functions in the way that you intend it to uh, as well. Instructions aren't clear enough. Um, so you can imagine um, if I went into, let's say I had set up a Google slide uh, that had all of my objects um, in one area, one room, you would call it, uh, that they had to solve before they could escape the room. Uh, if, if I did not give enough direction about the task that they were supposed to complete and how they were supposed to complete it, uh, it can lead to a lot of confusion uh, with your students. Um, and so uh, certainly um, giving adequate instruction, have little moments that really um, try to make the task uh, that they are um, doing very clear uh, to them. Uh, I touched on how best practices about how to make your clues and locks a little bit more um, involved to let them really use the material, apply the material, um, and kind of um, get into really thinking uh, about it. Uh, this is one of the bigger ones that I made, faux pas, when I was setting up, uh, you know, as an escape room or two for myself, um, that is not proofing the product. 
Um, I will say uh, that I, I myself, of course, because you have access to all the materials, all the pages, all the slides, um, did not realize until after um, I had a couple others looking at it uh, that permissions weren't right. Uh, there, it showed some of the answers at the end of the forms. Um, so how grateful was I um, that I got another set of eyes um, to kind of go through it and, and really proof, uh, proof it to make sure that it's, it's really operating smoothly. Um, and sometimes people will um, also catch when things aren't quite so clear to you. So I definitely advise, advise that to um, have, a, have a proof reading buddy uh, on that. And then not considering the audience. Uh, you know, if we are doing uh, perhaps a theme or content that isn't quite on task or isn't quite as relevant to your population there in your classroom, um, certainly their level of engagement probably isn't going to be quite as, um, you know, quite as high um, as we like it. Um, so I would say those are definitely the, the um, points that I came across for sure. Awesome. Okay, so I promised uh, that I would give you some resources uh, for you to use to create your own uh, escape room. And, uh, you know, these, I, I think you're gonna find uh, that it's very, uh, you know, that there's such a wide variety um, readily available um, to you guys uh, out there whenever you're putting your own escape room together. Um, they're uh, like crossword labs. You get as many puzzles, 295, you get unlimited access. Um, and then there uh, are ones like this, uh, pro profs, brain games that I list here that you could do crossword puzzles, you could do word find, you could do hangman, you could do, um, you know, any of those type of games. So there are four, four or five different types of uh, puzzles that you could incorporate into your escape room. Uh, you know, that you're doing. And, uh, you know, it's out there, it's available, they are not terribly difficult to incorporate. And what I love about, um, you know, about this platform um, that we're using that this is Google Sites, um, is that you can embed, embed the puzzles, the video clips, um, the next one I create, I think I'm going to tape, uh, tape the instructional part. Uh, you know, on something like Screencastify, and you can embed those right here uh, into your page that guides them through, uh, you know, through their decision making and the progress through your escape room. Um, graphics, uh, Canva, I can't speak enough to that. They have a ton of different graphics and things that you can, you can develop things like badges, um, certificates, uh, at the end, I had a, yes, maybe it's a little cheesy, but a you did it certificate at the end, uh, you know, because we all sometimes need our little, uh, little bit of gratification, our moment uh, for being uh, successful. Uh, and it makes it fine, you know, a lot, lot of fun, a lot of fun. Um, there's a lot of gifts out there, a lot of images, PNGs, things like I just put buttons uh, all throughout my little sites. Uh, for this purpose. Um, and so there's a lot of free out there, but um, I would say be cautious. It's going to, a lot of times it tries to help you download several different programs. Uh, and we always want to be cautious about any images, anything that we put up on our site that it's not involving any copyright, any of, any of those royalty um, type images. Um, so, but there's a lot out there um, that we can have free, uh, it's called Creative Commons, you know, where um, that they give free access uh, that people can use their images um, for, uh, for these purposes. Uh, then we have, uh, you know, there are some other sites too, uh, if you, if you want to create different types of mapping, depending on what discipline you are. Uh, and so Mindomo and, and Bubble are, are useful for those, uh, those type of purposes, uh, because I, I would be a little bit intrigued to see how different disciplines might like to use that, what type of puzzles uh, that you would like to create. 
there are tutorials out there uh, on YouTube that are widely available and are really, uh, you know, very helpful uh, for developing these, this type of platform. Um, and so I have listed here a couple of just quick tutorials for you. Um, now, certainly they are at all different levels. Um, so if you are, uh, you know, at that stage where you may have not created um, anything similar to this, uh, these are kind of moderate. Um, and certainly there are individual videos for, if I want to say, hmm, I want to insert audio, you know, in my, in my uh, escape room at, at this point, or I want to have a timer that's active where, you know, I, I want to find a timer, I want to insert the timer, how do I do that? Uh, you know, there are also more focused and basic ones um, available too for your use. Um, so, uh, you know, certainly uh, there there is just so much, again, so much out there. And I really encourage you guys uh, that there it's, it's a fun day that things are so much more accessible and doable um, for you. So I want to uh, now open the floor to you guys for questions about how you feel like you would uh, want to use it. Yes, Jenna, how can I answer your question? Oh, I forgot how to un unmute there for a minute. <laughs> I can hear you now. Okay. Um, so I just love this. You did a fabulous job. Um, how do you launch this in Blackboard? How do you utilize that? Are you using it as an assignment or just a, uh, or just putting a link there and making it fun? Give us some ideas how this can be utilized. Okay. So, uh, you know, the way that I had utilized my particular ones is, um, basically mine was as reinforcement. Uh, of content that we were um, already introducing. Let's say they had, you know, basic PowerPoints, all of that, uh, but I wanted to reinforce it and help them to apply it. Um, so we actually did it in my classroom and did it as, um, as in, in groups, in breakout groups uh, that we did. Um, any time, you can make it available for your students um, simply by um, sharing the link in just two seconds here, uh, because if I'm in, if I'm in, say this page right here, let me share it. Um, I'm going to, let me move this really quick. Uh, I'm going to say edit because now I'm not actively presenting that page. So let's say I was on my Google slide and this was the one that I wanted to. Um, once you have published, which I advise anytime you change anything, refresh, publish it, please, for your updates. Uh, but here's the link. And so all I would have to do is say, create a web link, like, you know, as you build your content in Blackboard, and it would take them right to the home page. Uh, that first, I could do take them to the first page, um, and they would begin their um, escape room uh, that way. Um, so it, it would be very easy to um, just provide it as a resource. That's interesting, um, you know, if you ask me about how you could incorporate, because technically those locks, um, I have done a lot of them as Google Forms, and there's no way, no reason why you couldn't have um, a form, right, and assign points for whether, you know, a certain number of points for each lock that they did successfully um, through forms. Uh, it, that, that would definitely be um, an easy way um, to be able to incorporate it. If, if one, let's say I wanted to do it for extra credit or um, you know, some manner of assignment for a specific unit that I was working on, uh, that would be an easy way to do it. Uh, it was through the forms uh, that you built in as your locks. Did that answer? Yes, ma'am. That was perfect. Thank you so much. <laughs> no problem. All right. What other questions do I have? And then I, I really want to hear you guys talk out loud about ideas. That was what I was most excited about this segment. 
Jessica. So I just wanted to say that Tracy put in another website in the chat, pixabay.com, and it has thousands of free, free um, images that you can use and you just credit the creator. Absolutely. Uh, so how fortunate are we that we have sites like that? I love that Pixabay. Um, so I, I certainly, um, now you make me want to go and, and find more. Um, and the easier, the easier it is um, to uh, get access to them, the better, because I, I will say that had been one of my frustrations. Oh, okay. That was a thank you message about and having to having to leave. <laughs> Um, but I would like to I would like to hear from a few of you guys about like what what would excite you what theme might you consider um, for your you know for your escape room. Oh, Johansson, you're always you always have comments. No, that's fine. Um, I just, I think it is a very ripe time uh, considering uh, we few, um, you know, we just don't get to have that face-to-face -face contact with our students like we typically would. Um, this can be easily be um, team, team building, do it in small groups if you like, um, and uh, a way to engage them. Ooh, Jenna, you had had your hand up. Yeah, I was just going to say, you know, um, we have our lovely live hospital, um, but right now we can't get to all of it, but this would be great for um, the mock disaster drill. Uh, I mean, you know, all kinds of, I can s visualize all kinds of virtual learning with this. So I think it's an absolute, I'm not great with Google Docs and stuff, but I can learn. It's not my favorite, <laughs> but I, I, I do think it's very, very uh, valuable tool and gets students to critically think. That's the main thing. Oh, sure. Uh, but it's, you know, it, it's all about how, like how you build it, your scenario. So I think it does take a whole lot of thought um, into it about creating those locks like that, that is um, kind of the, the fun part of it to where you get to, to um, kind of imagine how can I present this information that makes them engage in it, makes them go and find the answer and want to apply it. Uh, and so it's, it's a lot of fun, but you are right, uh, especially, uh, you know, for things like, uh, you know, skill building for safety issues, you know, you have, they'll go down a, a rabbit hole about, okay, now your patient does, uh, you know, responds in this way. You know, how do you respond to that? It, you know, and you have to figure out how to um, be successful um, in that particular challenge uh, that you're facing for sure. Okay, who else? More questions or thoughts about how, well, how do you think that you could apply? Um, this material. Ooh. Interesting. Okay, Tracy Soto, she in the library, because uh, I'll call you out, I know you. Um, so what, what ways do you think that you could use this, uh, like, for your purposes? maybe to provide education, or do you have a favorite genre that you might like to, uh, to make this up? All right, so thanks for calling me out. <laughs> okay. It's all good, it's all good. <laughs> um, so actually, as I was kind of watching your demonstration of what um, you have used it for, I was thinking that this might be a fun way to gamify our online information literacy program. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, our, our information literacy program, um, you know, in the in the face to face environment pre COVID was, um, you know, students coming to the library and sitting with a librarian for three hours and 
lots and lots and lots of sit and lecture um, and, and, you know, mm-hmm. students sit and listen and, and librarian lecturing. And, and we have tried to kind of gamify it in the face-to-face environment. Um, but then when everything moved online, it turned into watch a video, take a quiz, watch a video, take a quiz, watch a video, take a quiz. Yeah. So, um, you know, that, that's obviously not preferable, but, but again, we, we had to transition so quick to like, just get something online, just, just get it up there so they can do it. Um, that, that I think that being, um, a little bit intentional and, and gamifying that a little bit could really improve that, uh, that course. Ooh, nice application. I like that. And I like that, uh, you know, I kind of alluded to making little badges or whatever that you could do. Okay. Now we've learned it about this topic. You get to earn this badge, you know, and, um, kind of that building in a little bit of reward. Uh, to it too might be kind of um, fun to that. Yeah, and and maybe even like breaking uh-huh. apart the badges like um, uh, by like the different kinds of information. Like, you know, you could get a badge for being an expert Google searcher, you know, because, um, like you know, finding information isn't just about the stuff that's in the library. It's also about finding and, and understanding the the reliability and the credibility of all the information that's out there in different sources. Mm-hmm. So, um, so yeah, different badging that way too. Nice. I like it. So um, you as um, potential users, uh, what um, might be uh, intimidating to you um, about setting this type of um, e- e- escape room is what I'm calling it. Uh, but this challenge, like what, what would, what do you think is, it might be intimidating to you about it? Hmm. No takers. I, I, Jessica, this is Jenna again. I, I really don't have that much anything about being intimidated, but, um, I think just getting comfortable, maybe, you know, starting with something small and then maybe getting comfortable with that. And then as we progress, then we would probably uh, feel much better. Oh, I totally agree, uh, you know, with that uh, to where um, certainly you can start with uh, one specific room and play around with inserting images or inserting hyperlinks um, into it. Um, I think is is a very good uh, way uh, to kind of break yourself into it, get started um, on on this, um, and and so, and then you try it out, and all of these have previews um, available uh, or present if you're using Google Slides. Um, so then you can play around with it, do something a little different, and and then go through it and see, okay, how did that work? You know, how did that work for me? Okay, Uh, you would have lots of questions, but you missed the beginning. I'm sorry, Kristen. Uh, This session will be, uh, will has been taped. Um, So certainly, uh, you know, you can go back and review if you like. Excellent. Thank you, Colleen, uh, for that. But I love, uh, like I said, that we can be so creative because we can embed all kinds of, of media uh, whether it's audio, whether I'm taping my um, narration, whether I want uh, really interesting images or backgrounds, um, that it shouldn't, uh, you know, it's not near uh, at the complexity that it used to be, that you used to um, have to be able to write, write that code. Um, so it's an exciting, exciting new day. Excellent. Um, okay, Dr. Ume is leaving. A couple of others have had to leave. Um, so I will um, certainly open it up to any more questions that you might have for me. Um, certainly, I have, uh, you know, have my um, email available. Give me two seconds here. I was going get to it, get it up for you to see. Give me two seconds. Here, let me just type it in the chat.
So if you have questions, if you need anything, um, or you just want to bounce ideas off, I would definitely love it. Um, so Valerie, you're saying uh, that that you actually you can imagine uh, that you would enjoy using this for any kind of you know, lots of different subjects. Um, and uh, we definitely do strive to to have different ways of making things a little bit more engaging, entertaining. Um, and I think, again, I, I also look forward uh, to it. So thank you very much. I really, I really appreciate it. Um, I uh, certainly, again, if you have any questions, please uh, let me know. We have a couple more minutes, but um, I think people want time to explore is the thing. <laughs> and I know some other people might pop in with questions, but before y'all leave, if y'all can help Jeanette, and Jessica out and filling out that survey. I will repost it in the chat. We would really appreciate it. And as Jessica said, we're recording this, so it'll be available pretty soon. I know Jeanette tries to have a quick turnaround with the recordings. Well, thank you so much for attending this session. I hope it gets you excited and thinking about all kinds of different ways uh, that you can, can use this platform. Uh, oh, Kristen, you're saying you really want to uh, to do one for your math classes. Um, I think it can be very interesting. Um, you know, being a, a, a yet again a graduate student, I was like, oh, statistics. You know, you have to apply. You know, those uh, those methods in the right way. Uh, it might be actually kind of a fun way to to do that. So what which. Uh, which classes specifically do you teach, Kristen? Um, I teach a variety of classes. Uh, right now I'm teaching pre-cal and cal one, and I can just totally see um, how it would be a super fun way to incorporate some applications, especially in my cal one class, um, mm -hmm. um, for them to to play this sort of game. I just haven't quite figured it all out and I'm really upset that I missed the beginning of the session. I even had a timer going, but I am gonna rewatch it because I kind of have my own ideas too, but you know, like with everything in education, I, I wanna get, I wanna steal other people's ideas and then build onto it. So I definitely will be re -watch, or watching the recording. I appreciate your information. Oh, you're, you're very welcome. And, uh, you know, I, I think you are right. We can all learn from one, one another. Um, and certainly uh, there's lots of creativity to be had um, for, for sure. Uh, so I really appreciate that. All right, well, thank you very much. I again, I really appreciate um, your attention and, and attending this session. I appreciate it, you. And I am definitely going to hang around for a little bit. But thanks for spending time with me today. You're welcome. And Colleen, you rock. Colleen, you rock. And that has been Jessica Cox, an assistant professor of nursing, talking to us about how to use escape rooms in the digital classroom. That is the end of the conference. I hope you all have enjoyed it. Have a good one, and uh, maybe I'll see you next year.